Good afternoon, everybody. Uneducated Economist here. Got some new tires for the Toyota. $375. That's all it costs to put four new tires on this car. So $500 for the car, $375 for tires. I'm less than $1,000 into this thing. I'm doing pretty good as far as I'm concerned. So anyway, um, let's talk about economics. Had a few people tell me that I have flip-flopped on the housing market. And this is something that I've talked about a couple of times. And if you're going to watch the economy, you're going to have to understand that there is ever-changing tides to the economy. And that at some point, some information is going to come in, you know, a cer certain circumstances will, will take place, and it will change your beliefs and your, and your outlook on, on timelines and stuff. Now, prior to the pandemic, I was very much of the belief that we were going to have a major downturn in the housing market. Like, there was very little doubt in my mind. And as the pandemic started to kick in and people were like starting to panic about whether or not they were going to be able to make their housing payment, forbearance kicked in, right? So all this moratorium, you didn't have to pay your rent, didn't have to make your house payment. So that really changed what was going to happen with the housing market because it was going to crash. I mean, if there was ever a crash to be had, that was the moment that it was going to happen. But they covered it up. They papered it over. They told everybody, in fact, they told everybody, don't make your payments. In fact, just don't do it at all. You know? So refinancing or just restarting up on the payments again, the wave of foreclosures that was going to come never materialized. And now I think about this, like what happened? All these people could not possibly have just like come out of forbearance and paid back all the back payments. Did everybody just refinance? Did they restructure their loans? Or did they just sell out? Like, man, the price of this went way up. I haven't made a payment in a while. I can just sell this house just completely out from, you know, get out from underneath and make a bunch of money and, not, and no worries, right? So like, I didn't even make any payments. I kept all my money and I made a bunch of money off the selling of this house. So there was no real place for foreclosures to kick in. Cause you have to think during the great financial crisis, People had overextended themselves on buying homes, and then those homes went underwater, meaning the price of them came down dramatically. And then when the prices were underwater, they didn't want to make their payments anymore. They couldn't even sell out to get out from underneath them. That's when we started having the wave of foreclosures coming in. So we're not, ex we're not seeing that. We're not, that's not taking place this time around. So it's not like I flip-flopped on the housing market, there was conditions that have changed since prior to the pandemic. When I saw the housing market crashing, it didn't take place. There was a big cover-up of it. They pretty much told anybody who was going to get foreclosed on that they're not going to be foreclosed on, and they fixed the problem, restructured everybody's loans, and prevented that foreclosure, that wave of foreclosure from taking place. Okay. So now that we understand why it is that we didn't see the wave of foreclosures, let's think about what the Federal Reserve is doing in raising of the interest rates, because this is going to be a very interesting proposition to kind of try and understand, because if the interest rates go up, there's going to be less homes being sold because people won't be able to make the payments. Now, this is something to think about. If there's less homes being sold, then there's less mortgages being written. And if there's less homes being refinanced, because the interest rates have gone up, there's less mortgages being written. And if there's less mortgages being written, there's less mortgage-backed securities being made. And there, if there's less mortgage-backed securities being made, the Federal Reserve is the only one really providing into the, into the market mortgage-backed securities as they unwind their balance sheet. So we have to think about that for just a minute. During this whole quantitative easing, and the dropping of interest rates and everybody running out there and refinancing their homes because they were able to get the super cheap interest rate or they were buying homes because they were trying to get out of the city and moving out to the country. This produced a lot of mortgage-backed securities for the Federal Reserve to buy. So you think about it. When somebody refinances their home, that is the destruction of the original loan and reestablishing of a new loan. So when that happens, that pretty much takes it away from the mortgage-backed security, reestablishes another mortgage-backed security for the Federal Reserve to purchase. So this provided a lot of mortgage-backed securities for the Federal Reserve to purchase on this revolving basis, keeping the interest rates on mortgages low. Does, does all that kind of make sense? Federal Reserve says, hey, we're going to be buying a lot of mortgage-backed securities. 
that drops the interest rates as people, including investors, everybody out there tries to front run the Federal Reserve by getting into this market because the value of mortgage-backed securities like any other bond, as the yields go down, the prices go up. So as they were dropping the interest rates, the value of these mortgage-backed securities were going up and everybody was trying to pour into them knowing that the Federal Reserve was going to be a buyer of these things. But now they're backing out and everybody's saying, whoa, as they back out, the Federal Reserve is going to be unwinding that balance sheet, all those mortgage-backed securities. And as they do this, it's going to cause the interest rates to absolutely go through the roof and the price of these bonds to come down. The only thing is, is that there's not enough of these things being produced right now because there's less mortgages being refinanced and less mortgages being written. So this is, gives the Fed that ability to unwind their balance sheet. You see, like, yeah, the interest rates are going to go up, but it's not going to be the skyrocketing of interest rates because there's not nearly as many mortgage-backed securities out there. And there, believe it or not, there are investors out there who do want to buy these buy these. Uh, somewhat safe and secure assets. Now, I wouldn't necessarily call a mortgage-backed security a safe and secure asset, but when you think about it, for the most part, people generally make their mortgage payment. And if they make their mortgage payment, it generally makes these mortgage-backed securities a fairly safe investment, so long as people continue to make those mortgage payments. So that's the major concern is that if we have a downturn in the economy and we go into a recession, which there's very little doubt in my mind when you have so many people who are talking about it and you see it all over the news and you got like, never mind. When you get so much uh, talk about a recession, it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy and that it that the people will pretty much make it occur simply by just behaving in a way that they feel that the recession is coming and so therefore it causes a recession to happen. It's very much like inflation expectations, you know. If you have this inflation expectation, everybody starts reacting like there's going to be an inflation coming into the future. That expectation alone will cause a self-fulfilling prophecy of inflation as people start hoarding up off on all the goods and buying like extra amounts because they're afraid that they will have to pay a higher price in the future or that they just won't get it in altogether and this causes the prices to go up as well so inflation expectation can be a self-fulfilling prophecy very much like a recession is but the recession is a little different in the fact that you have the federal reserve who is actually stating hey we want to put a downturn on consumer demand well it's starting to happen just look at the consumer sentiment it's dropping dramatically now, I had a feeling that we would see the price inflation not go up. That was wrong. The, the price inflation continued to go up, at least as, as of the last report. The next one that comes out, I'm sure we're going to see a, a churning in the, in, the, in the CPI report. And all because of the consumer sentiment. I mean, just look at the consumer sentiment dropping, sentiment dropping and the gas prices, energy prices going up, food prices going up. This is going to put a big downturn on people's spending habits. They're not going to want to go out there to Walmart and Target to buy those items when they're spending so much money on gas and food. So that's another thing. People are telling me like I'm a fraud or flip-flopper. That's the difference. When you go out, you are going to see the inflation, the price inflation moving into the items that you are going to need. Think about that. The items that you want, those things are going to drop like crazy. Right? You're going to want it, but you're not going to pay for it because you're more worried about buying gas and food, but yet you're going to see TV super cheap. You're going to see luxury items dropping like a stone, but all the necessities going through the roof. And that's the life you're going to have to live for a while. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be very tough. And now you think about it. The Federal Reserve says they want to put a... a downturn on this consumer demand but really what they're saying is they want to put a downturn on inflation and the only way to really downturn inflation is to keep the wages from going up any further and that is jobs and so what the federal reserve is saying is that they want to cut jobs they want to raise the unemployment i don't know how else to say it federal <laughs> federal reserve is trying to cause pain. I don't know how to say it for you guys. All right. Uneducated economists, you guys let me know. I'll leave links down in the description for you guys. Oh, and uh, be sure and check out the podcast. If you haven't gone over to the uneducatedeconomist.com website where you can find the podcast and links to just about everything I do, uh, go check that out. 
I would really like to uh, push that podcast more if we could. So, all right. Uneducated economists, you guys let me know.